G'day, g'day, g'day. Hello, folks. Uh, Andrew Griffiths here, just uh, getting our webinar about building or seven steps to building a bulletproof personal brand or something along those kind of lines. Bottom line is we're here to talk about uh, personal branding. Now, there's a few people on the line. Let me see. I think we've got a few more people starting to tune in. That'd be fantastic. Uh, by all means, do me a favor, just drop a g'day into the chat box. If you're new to Zoom, just have a look at the little menu uh, bar and you'll be able to see that there's a, a Zoom webinar chat box. You can drop in a g'day there. You can let me know if you can hear me uh, nice and clearly. And then what we'll do is we'll get going. So we've got Claire on the line. We've got Jen on the line. We've got the lovely Joplin on the line. Hello, Joplin. And we've got Rachel as well. Uh, congratulations for tuning in. Now, I know you've only got an hour, um, and we've only got an hour for this webinar because time is precious uh, during the week. So you know what? I'm going to dive in really, really fast and get this webinar started. I am recording it, so if you've got to duck off and you've got to do something else, don't worry. You'll get access to the recording as well. Um, if you've got any kind of questions you want to ask, just drop them into the chat box along the way and I'll make a point of responding to those uh, as we can. Now, if you've never done a webinar with me, um, just, you know, just kind of strap in, right? I, I, I cover a lot of ground. I go pretty fast. Um, I try and pack as much information as I can into the time um, and I will aim to give you a whole pile of really helpful ideas, thoughts, strategies, whatever it might be. And on this topic of building a bulletproof personal brand, wow, it is a big, big topic. I mean, I run like three-day workshops on this. So let's condense it. Let's get going. Thanks for tuning in. Right. Mighty topic. Okay. The key is if we get it right with our personal brand, and that's one of the messages that I really want to showcase throughout this webinar, um, there are so many rewards. And I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about my relationship with building my personal brand as we move through. But the real reality is of where we're at now. I mean, a few years back, however long you want to kind of call it, you know, we used to have business on one side and life on the other. And, uh, and, and they were kind of really separate. You know, whatever you did was there, your, your personal life was over there. But over the last probably 10, 15 years even, what we're starting to see is a lot more of this. The overlapping of business and life. That interaction to the point where it's really just life. And this has an impact in terms of, of when we're building a personal brand. Sure, you all understand business branding. You build a business brand or you work in a business that has a brand. But when it comes to building a personal brand, that's something that's a little bit different for people. And the two worlds were separate. When they start to collide, uh, that means we've got to understand personal branding even more. So something that we need to be aware of right here, right now is a simple thing that we're all being watched. Now, I don't want to sound creepy. I don't want, to, I don't want you to, to, to kind of be overly concerned, but, but we are. We're being watched on social media. We're being watched how we are in the workplace. We're being watched how we are at networking events. You know, we're even being watched when we're walking down the road, when we're chatting to people, when we're interacting with people. I know in my little world, when I'm traveling around all the time, there, there are so many opportunities for that. And I had a really, really interesting kind of a story, which I'm going to share with you a little bit later, about a project that I was approached to do for Qantas. So what is being watched? If I'm saying that people are watching us, what is it? Well, they're watching everything, right? How we interact, how we treat others, how we carry ourselves. We've got our public face and then we've got another kind of behind the scenes kind of face. What does that really, really look like? The, the, the thing that happens though from here is people start to form an opinion about you as an individual and your brand, okay? And I'm going to refer to us as, as a brand because that's what we are. So people start to form an opinion about your brand, uh, whether you like it or not. And over time, as more people, you know, start to, you know, get to see us and what we do, well, what we actually start to get is a collective opinion on our personal brand. Okay, pretty straightforward. I'm sure that some of you are kind of already got your head around this. So what I'm really saying here is, and I'll repeat this a few times, is that we have a personal brand, whether we want one or not whether we actively pursue building one or not, because people are forming this collective opinion about who you are, what you do, and how you do it, right? So I've got a personal brand. If I go back and say, well, okay, who is impacted or, or this opinion that people have of me, 
like what does that influence well the reality is now in the world that we live in particularly with the online world it influences everything our potential customers will often find out about us and our who we are what we do our credibility our integrity our trustworthy long before they would ever have a conversation with us and this is an interesting kind of point this opinion this this collective opinion influences your network who wants to be a part of your network? It impacts your staff. Who wants to work for you? You know, you might think you do a great job, but if word out there is that you're a bit of a mongrel to work with, you know, that's going to impact on who's going to come and you know want a job with you. Your existing clients, your industry, your family, your friends, your business itself, and even you. So the personal brand that we have, which other people form an opinion about, has an influence on all of that kind of stuff. And that's one of the most incredible things that I've seen change in the business world in the last 20 years. I think for many years, as I mentioned right at the beginning, we had our business and had a big business brand and we could hide behind that. You know, it was all about the business brand and I might have been the owner, but I didn't have to have a profile. I didn't have to have a public presence. I didn't have to have a social media uh, presence because we didn't have social media. Now, of course, we've got our, our, our business brand but people want to look behind that and say, well, who is the person behind the brand? And then what kind of person are they? What is their, what do they stand for? What's their credibility? What's their integrity? What's their trust? All of these kind of things that we need to kind of consider. So the bottom line, and this is the crux of this entire webinar, is that everything we do is either building our personal brand or it's eroding our personal brand. Sure, in reality, there's probably stuff that's neutral, doesn't really matter, but I look at every activity we do on a day-to-day -day basis is either enhancing who we are and our brand, or it's reducing it and causing it conflict, problems, whatever the case may be. And we need to understand that right from the beginning because that then influences our actions, it influences what we do, and it should make us stop and take note. Because having a personal brand, having a strong personal brand is now the single most biggest and most compelling competitive advantage that most of us can have in business. I'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. So right here, right now, everyone on this call, you know, you've all got a personal brand, whether you want one or not. What's smarter? Being passive about it or being proactive about it? Just letting that personal brand develop or actually saying, hey, I need to be a lot more strategic about it because it's so important, because it's so influential on who I do, what I do, and certainly uh, on, on, the, on my business and the future of my business. My aim today is really simple, ladies. I'm not sure if we've got any gents on the call, but my aim today is to encourage you to think differently about your personal brand, to understand how important it's become and to show you what you need to do to bulletproof your own personal brand. So that's really the objective. I just like to set the scene and say, look, yes, we're being watched. Everything we do is eroding or building, et cetera, et cetera. But the power of a personal brand is incredible. Now, if I go back a little bit and just go back to uh, share a little bit more of my story with you. Obviously today, I'm, I'm, I'm a speaker, I, I'm an author, all that kind of stuff. I met many of you at the retreat uh, last year on the Gold Coast and, uh, and I'm sure that um, I'll meet many of you in the coming year as well. I've got 13 books, soon to be 14 books that have been sold in 65 countries. Uh, they're basically all bestsellers. You know, that kind of has built my profile. And of course, I've worked with companies all around the world from the European Union through to the likes of Australian kind of organizations. Now, for me, though, my brand building really started 35 years ago when I bought my first business at the age of 18. So I bought a dive shop. And uh, uh, for those of you who are at the retreat, you know, I, I bought a dive shop that was 30 kilometers from the ocean. So it wasn't necessarily the biggest and the, and the brightest of business moves, but that's how I started out. Interestingly enough, back then when I became a, a dive instructor and a commercial diver, I remember um, that I had a guy who was my instructor who trained me and his name was Robin Hood uh, of all things. What a great name. And he was five foot tall and five foot wide and uh, ex-Vietnam vet, tough as nails. And I always remember his words of wisdom. And he said, look, you're in the business of teaching people something that if they don't listen to you, um, it could be life-threatening for them. You've got to develop respect. And, uh, and that means 
Don't be overly familiar with your dive students. Keep a bit of distance between people. Never give people a reason to lose trust in you. All of these kind of you know, things up your training. Make sure you look the part as a dive instructor, you know, as a, as a commercial diver. And what I realized all these years later was he was teaching me to build my personal brand at a really, really young age. And he was right. And I had this wonderful grounding in understanding that I have a reputation, whether I realize it or not. And, you know, it's up to me to really maintain that reputation and to up, you know, and to maintain that, that, um, that profile. For me today, 35 years down the line, obviously, you know, I'm a bit of a public figure. I'm, you know, speaking, I've got a profile, I've got a large, large-ish social media kind of following. Over those years, what I've realized is that my, my personal brand is without a doubt my number one asset. Absolutely my number one asset. It's the thing that, that, um, that gets me business. People work with me because of my brand. It's the thing that protects my business when it's under threat of some sort during tough times. It gives me a competitive advantage. Um, it, it, it attracts other people who want to partner with me. Um, it attracts unusual business opportunities, you know, at, at the highest levels around the world. So because I had an early grounding in it and I've always really worked hard to maintain my, my personal brand and do everything I can to really enhance it over the years, it's become more and more significant. And I know that because people tell me that. You know, I want to work with you. I know your reputation. You've got a, an incredible reputation for integrity, for delivering value, for honesty, for all those kind of things. So to the point where for me now, it, I, I see it as this tangible item that I have to work to protect in every way. And I know how easy it is to completely destroy your personal brand because I see people doing it every single day. And that's, you know, again, one of those key points. So this, this personal, strong personal brand for me is an insurance policy. It's a business development tool. It's a, um, you know, it, it's, it's a sense of um, integrity that I have, you know, being so, so committed to building my personal brand. And so I would never do anything to, to damage it. You would never see me drunk in public. You would never see me, you know, being horrible on social media. You would never see me treating someone horrible. A, it's not who I am, but B, I know that that stuff can destroy it in a second. Yet I see a lot of people that are public people that are, you know, really nice. When you see them on a stage, yet you see them off a stage, they're not so nice. You know, that, uh, you know, you, you see people that have like this alter ego, you know, they're kind of nice when someone's watching, but they're not real nice when they're not. And this is all a part of our brand. Okay, so that's setting the scene. Give me a little bit of feedback along the way, folks, in the chat box. Anyone who's just tuned in, drop in a little note. Give me a little bit of yee Let me know that you're still alive out there. Um, as I said, I kind of go through this pretty fast paced, but a little bit of feedback just kind of keeps me knowing that I'm on the right path. So make sure that you're on the right webinar. Here and loving it, alive and kicking. Hello, Sarah. Hello, Clarissa. Beautiful. Let's dive into this, folks. Let's talk a little bit about the, the seven steps to building a bulletproof personal brand. Right. Step number one, brand you. Right. Start to think of yourself as a brand, ladies and ladies. Okay. Think of yourself as a brand. And, and that's a really interesting kind of a point. We understand a business brand or a television as a brand, but often it's a little bit harder to actually think of ourselves as a brand, but that's exactly what we've really got to do. So I've got a pile of little tips here as well. So number one, start thinking of yourself as a brand. Two, think about the effort that you might put into developing and building a business brand. I'm assuming that most of you are business owners. Certainly a lot of the names that I see are wonderful, incredible business owners. Joplin, you're amazing with what you do. You know how hard it is, you know, to, to build a brand and to do all of that kind of stuff, you know, but what are the things you got to do? Sure. You got to have a great logo. You've got to have, you know, um, a great color. You got to know what your brand stands for. You got to have taglines. You got to have all that kind of stuff. That's exactly the same for us when we're building our personal brand. We've got to have the right aspirations. What do you want people to say and feel about you as a brand? For me, I want people to say, Andrew's a guy, he's totally credible, he's total, he has total integrity, he's this, he's that, you know, those high level elements. What do you want people to say about you and your brand? 
This is a conscious decision that you need to make. What are the, the three words that you want to describe to use yourself? What are the three words you would like other people to use to describe you? Think about that. This is, again, the concept of being proactive about developing your brand. A little example of that is with my website, when I did my last website redevelopment, and if you haven't seen it, um, just check out www.andrewgriffiths.com.au. My brief to my website project manager, um, Sarah, was really simple. The one word that I want to pop into everyone's mind when they go to my website is credibility. Credibility. And I, and I want them to, as they're looking through my site, which is a, a monstrous site, there's heaps of stuff on it, is like, this guy is the real deal. Credibility. Now, that was really interesting because my previous website, when I, when I did that, which is a really nice website, won an award, best you know, website in Queensland, rah, rah. And, uh, and I would get an email from someone, a potential client about anything, say a speaking job, and it would literally be, you know, dear Andrew, how much do you charge to come and do a keynote presentation? That was it. With my new website, which I had done a lot more work around credibility, which was with the branding, with the images, with the testimonials, with the, the, the positioning statements, with the people I've worked for, all of that kind of stuff, the emails changed. And how the emails changed, they started to come in like this. Dear Mr. Griffiths, we have this event coming up. We would like to know, one, are you interested in doing something like this? And two, are you available? Okay, by the way, um, PS, could you please let us know what your speaker fee is so that we can budget for it if you are available and it does interest you. The whole conversation changed from one of how much do you charge to, you know, to a credibility based conversation. It wasn't all about money. That's what shifted by me enhancing my personal brand with a really powerful website. So think about that. Think about how you protect your business brand. As I said before, that's how you need to protect your personal brand. You would never do anything to damage your business's brand. Why would you do anything to damage your personal brand? Now, I'm gonna keep bringing that point up, and the reason that I'm gonna bring that point up is because damaging our personal brand doesn't really mean you're gonna be out doing tequila laybacks and running naked through the middle of town, even though I know Clarissa does that regularly. Um, what it really relates to is getting online and you know, the online world is where you know, um, brands are destroyed now at a personal level. So I'm gonna talk about that um, a little bit more. One thing I'm really gonna suggest that you do do is that you find a personal brand model, someone who you can use as a role model in that space. Who do you admire because of the way that they act? Who do you admire because of the way they put themselves out in the world? Because of, you know, every time you see their stuff, it's high integrity, it's consistent. You know, look at how they do, look at the language they use, look at what they post online. I mean, I've got to say, I think Oprah is an incredible, you know, brand role model, personal brand role model. There's Pardon me, there's many around which one really resonates with you. Start to become more aware of personal brands, of other people's personal brands, and, and get an understanding of what it really looks like. We have our business brand, but what are other people doing with their personal brands? And as much as I joke um, about Clarissa, uh, a minute ago, the reality is she's built a really strong personal brand as well. Visually, integrity-wise, you, you guys wouldn't all be on the, the club if she didn't have a strong personal brand. Watch the train wrecks that are out there when people, you know, literally go off the rails and destroy their personal brands. You know, look at um, the recent one. Oh my God, I've just gone blank. Uh, Michelle Bridges, okay? Drink driving with a kid, with her son in the car. You know, like that's how you can destroy a personal brand. You know, like it's very hard to get up and talk about integrity. It's very hard to get up and talk about, you know, how you should act. All she has to move into now is talk about, well, you know, my recovery from this, which is, I get that, but there's always those moments of doubt. Has anyone heard about Lance Armstrong in the last six or seven years? You know, that, that kind of stuff, you know, has a huge, huge impact. Now, they're famous people, and I get it, they can recover. Tiger Woods has recovered. They do to some degree. But once the seed is sown, that doubt, you know, it, it's really hard to recover from that. Branding covers a lot of different stuff. We're gonna talk about it a little bit more as much as we can, but the bottom line is this. You have a personal brand, whether you want one or not. Be proactive about yours. Don't let your personal brand develop in a passive way, okay? Let it develop, let it grow. 
in a planned way, in a strategic way. That's my first and strongest of these points. Well, they're all really strong and vitally important, but let's use that one as the first one, right? And again, just if you're wondering, I'll give you access to this recording and a copy of this presentation as well so you can download it. So just, I can't remember if I mentioned that right at the beginning, but you will. The second step to building a bulletproof action, uh, sorry, to building a bulletproof personal brand is this. And this is something that I, gee whiz, I, I cannot say how much this, this drives my world. Considered action. Assume you're being watched all the time. Now, as I said, I know that sounds creepy, but I don't really mean it that way. Um, it's interesting for me. Uh, when I, um, I started uh, seeing... Uh, my current lady, uh, Lolita Lowe, a little while ago, a couple of years ago, really. Now, so that's all. Sound, that all came out wrong. I didn't quite know how to how to bring Lolita in the conversation. It was just we were going together to a conference in Adelaide, and uh, it was kind of the first time we'd travelled together. And uh, and literally from the you know when we got on the plane, you know I was really well dressed and aware, all this kind of stuff. And uh, and Lolita said, "Well, you're really formal. I thought you'd be a bit more casual." I said, "Well." There's probably people on the plane that are going to the conference. They'll know me. They will have seen my photo on the board. When I get to the hotel, you know, like I'm on. From the minute I leave my house to the minute I get home again, I'm on. Okay. And, and, and that's because, you know, for me, I turn up at the hotel. If I'm horrible at the hotel when I'm checking in or if I'm at the bar downing tequila slammers, you know, like people see that. People notice that. And I know that, you know, protecting my personal brand um, just happens all the time. I had a really interesting experience. Um, a couple of years ago, Qantas approached me asking me if I'd like to do a project for them. And I had to go down to Sydney. I was living in Cairns at the time and I had to fly down to Sydney for a day to do an interview. And, uh, and so, you know, I, I said, sure, I'd love to. So I've gone to the airport a few weeks later and they didn't have a ticket for me there. It was really difficult. Everything was problematic. I kind of thought, oh, this is a great start. And then, of course, I finally got on the plane. I was seated in seat 957J between, you know, three front row forwards. And uh, I got to Sydney. Um, they wouldn't let me into the club because I had to wait for the right time, even though I was a member. I, you know, it was, everything was difficult. Everything was horrible. And it was just an awkward trip. And, it, and I was like, wow, that was problematic. When I got into this interview, they, they pulled out a report on me from the moment I arrived at the airport to the moment I literally got into that room. And they put obstacles in front of me. They put challenges in front of me to see how I handled it. And the reason was because if I was going to be working for Qantas and doing a project for Qantas, they wanted to make sure that, you know, how was I going to act? Everyone acts nice when you're in the room doing the stuff, when you're doing the training or whatever, but how do you act on the plane on the way? Did I drink on the plane? Did I, was I rude? Was I, you know, a check-in? Did I get grumpy? Did, was I irritable with the check-in staff? When people said, no, you can't come to the club, how did I handle that? Now, I don't really get stressed out about that kind of stuff, so it didn't really bother me. It was just irritating, but I certainly wouldn't take it out on someone else. That made me realize just how much people really are looking at us. When I'm getting booked for speaking jobs, I know now that a lot of organizations that are booking us will look through my social media to see what I'm saying. Because on my website, I'm just going to say, hey, I'm awesome, right? That's what we all do. But on our social media is where we, the truth comes out. What are we really talking about? You know, what are, what are the things that are really being said? That's what this is all about, okay? Does that make sense? Ladies, give me a little bit of feedback. So treat everyone, you know, your personal brand is hugely influenced by how you treat others. So that, again, is, is my key message out of this. When you're really on show 24-7, you know, you've got to be really, really careful about that. You know, so treat everyone you encounter with absolute and utter respect. Thanks, folks. Love it. Thank you for the feedback, folks. That really helps. Um, I mean, for me, that's my nature anyway. But, you know, we all get tired. We all get a bit cranky. Things go wrong. You know, it's, it's one of those situations. That I, I remember going to India and it was like three o'clock in the morning. I'd flown all the way from Australia. I was there on a book tour and, um, and I was checking into a hotel in New Delhi. And, I, and, and the guy that I was checking me in, I had to fill in this old kind of motel book. And I, he wanted the registration number of my car. And I'm going, oh, my car, I don't have a car. I've got 
driven from here. And he goes, and I could not check in until I'd given him the registration number of my car. Now, I, I for the life of me, A, I couldn't remember it, but B, I was kind of going, what the hell do you need my reg? And I, I, it was a ridiculous thing. He didn't need it. But the problem is, in India, if there's a column, it needs to be filled in. And I quickly realized that all I had to do was just go, whatever, ABC123, that's my registration number. And I'd completed what needed to be completed, and then I could check in. But as I'd done that, I got the key, an American lady went up, and she was having this big argument with this guy about, why do you need my license number? Rah, rah, rah. And of course, nothing that she said was going to change that situation. She was not going to get a room until there was a number in that box. And it just reminded me that sometimes it's all about going with the flow. And I kind of try to do that. Be ridiculously polite, okay? Never underestimate the, the importance of a small gesture. You know, just treat everyone as an equal, whatever it is you're doing. And it's, you know, a lot of people treat the CEO of a company really well and treat the receptionist like crap. And, uh, and I think one of the greatest lessons for life, let alone, you know, for, for building a personal brand is treat everyone really well. Build a reputation as a win-win kind of person. Master the art uh, of empathy. You know, be generous. You know, no one likes a mean person, you know, on that side of things. We all get a bee in our bonnet. I, look, I understand that as much as anyone. And we can tell the world in an instant, but it ends in tears. Anyone remember? You know, this horrendous thing. So the line there is Cyril. That was a dentist who shot this line, you know, and 35, I think the last count was 75 million people had, you know, issued their, their hatred towards this guy. Now that's a huge, huge extreme, but I tell you what, it's very easy. As Catherine said there, social media posts by you and others on your posts say so much about you and they absolutely do. I look at this and I kind of go, wow, you know, I am ridiculously considered with everything that I post. Now, that doesn't mean I don't post. I post quite a lot on Facebook and social media, but I'm very, very considered. I'll voice my opinions. I'll, you know, I will share kind of, you know, things that, that, that matter to me, but I'm considered about it. I try to make most of my posts really positive, really, you know, uplifting, um, and ideally a little bit of fun, tongue in cheek around them. Things that bug me, cruelly to animals, you know, stupid things, stupid government stuff, whatever it might be. You know, I put it up there, but I try to put some reference and, and a, you know, a bit of sense around that. Um, but we've never been in a position where we can make so many people so grumpy so quickly. Something's like, you know, in, in a world that can divide you, climate change, politics, religion, all these kind of things can soon divide. Doesn't mean you don't post about that stuff. Look, that's your call, but just think a bit about it. You know, people look back through your feed and they will, you know, if you're the owner, if you're, it's your business, whatever it might be, they will make decisions about doing business with you based on your Facebook post. You won't even know if they don't like to deal with you because you'll never hear from them. Okay. Because they don't like what they read, they'll go no further. Um, it's always much easier to sleep on that difficult email. And we all, you know, we all have those things. We've all sent emails that we probably wish we didn't, those kind of things. So for me, because I, I've spent so much time and energy and invested so much in building my personal brand, um, I, I'm so aware of how easily I could damage it. And uh, so we need to long, think long and hard about everything we post. And we need to think long and hard about everything we do. That's, that's really the crux of considered action and say, look, is what I'm posting here, is that you know, building my personal brand or is it eroding my personal brand? The worst thing you can do is do nothing. Because if you do nothing, you go, well, that's the safest thing, right? If you don't do anything, people will form their own opinion about you. And is that really what you want? You know, it's easy to say, yeah, sure, they can find, I don't care. It's not about caring or not. It's about, you know, if you don't have a personal brand, you know, these days you're kind of handicapped employment wise, business wise, all kinds of things kind of come into play. You can make or break your personal brand by how you act and how you treat others. And, uh, and again, I'm not for one second suggesting that any of you wouldn't treat people well. I'm saying that you've just got to be that little bit more aware of the fact that, you know, people watch, people are aware, and they've got many more ways to watch us than we ever realized. Okay, number three, partner well. 
there's this really great saying that says, if you lay down with dogs, you get up with fleas. And, uh, and, and I love that. Not my dog, of course, but other dogs, you get up with fleas. And all it really says, all it really means is that, you know, whoever you hang out with, you know, you become like, I guess, in some respects. Who you partner with, you know, has a giant impact on your personal brand. So for me, how I look at that, by partnering, I kind of mean um, probably even people that I would work with, um, people that I might do something um, in, in a public space. So for example, with uh, Clarissa's retreat, the, the, the club and, and the retreat last year, if I didn't think that Clarissa's brand was reputable, if I didn't think that, that the way she operated was reputable, there is no way in hell I would put my brand next to it. There's no way I would speak. It's not just, it's not for me about, oh, I get paid, who cares? Absolutely not. I'm, again, super considered about who I would work with, you know, partner with, what kind of media would I work with? Um, what companies would I work with? And I'll tell you what, I really know what companies I wouldn't work with. And it's a long list because, again, by working with them, you know, they're going to destroy, they're, they're going to damage my brand. And I've made mistakes with that in the years. You know, I, I did a partnership where I spoke an event a long time ago now in Melbourne called a Financial Education Summit. And I did it because I got to work with Richard Branson and Tim Ferriss and a few people like that. But it was a disgraceful event. It was just getting 9,000 people into a room and then flogging as much crap to them as you possibly could in four days. And I just don't operate that way. And I, I regret it to this day, you know, being involved in it. Um, but also other kind of like, you know, joint venture things where people say, hey, let's just do a promotion together. Let's do a, maybe do a workshop together. You know, let's do some kind of event together. You know, I am very, very, very slow to, to do that kind of stuff simply because, you know, I, I, I partner slowly because I just, again, protect your brand at every stage of the game. Look at the logos of potential partners, you know, people you may have worked with or clients or whatever it might be. What do they say about you? Do your homework before your partner, you know, that kind of stuff. The second part of this partnering for me that I think about is also your network. Who are the people in your network? And I look at my network in a very, very different way. I, I have a really extensive network of people and my my, my thing is I've got a reputation within that network. So it might be other speakers, it might be communities, it might be the general public, it might be people who have read my books. And for me, whatever that network is, I, I kind of look at it and say, well, my, my role in that network is to always add value to that, you know, be a, be a giver, not a, just a taker in that network. Um, another part in, in more kind of closed um, networks, perhaps where maybe a few other kind of high profile speakers that I might be a part of a small group with, um, people might say, oh, could you do an introduction to me to one of those people? And, you know, I, I protect my network voraciously. Like if someone wants me to introduce someone who's, you know, got a bit of profile or whatever, I'll reach out to that person first and say, hey, Keith, such and such has asked me to do an introduction. Have you got any interest in doing this or whatever? Um, the same thing goes, you know, with that, when it comes to referring people for business, there's good referrals, and there's bad referrals. I'm never going to refer someone who I think is a lunatic to, to someone in my network or, a, or someone who I respect and value, you know, because that just erodes my um, referral. You know what it's like? I'm sure you've got referrers as well. You've got those people that every time you get an email and they're referring a client to you, you go, oh my God, that's awesome. You know they'll be a great client. You know that it'll be legitimate. You know that it'll be quality. You know they'll pay, all of those kind of things. And then you have those other people that refer you. It's always complicated. It's always not really what you want to do. You feel an obligation because they referred you. And the, the, the client project or whatever always ends in tears. And probably you don't get paid. Those two kind of scenarios. Let's, let's err on the side of the first one, I think, is that side of it as well. Um, and of course, the last part about this is, is making sure you invest time in your network every single day, even if it's just a few minutes. So the two elements there, we've got our partnering side of things there, companies, organizations that you associate with. That says a lot about your personal brand. But then when you're in a network, like the club, for example, is a prime example there, how do you show up? You know, what do you bring? What's the value you bring? What, what role are you playing? Are you a giver or a taker? You know, like, 
bring both protect the other people in the club as well you know like really honor that that community because you know it's a part of your personal brand and who you are develop a reputation as someone who does great referrals that's a beautiful way to build your personal brand so you can see here what i'm talking about is not logos and you know all that kind of stuff it's, it's really comes back to all about how we act that's because that's the most influential thing that we do to build our personal brand yes write a book that builds your personal brand yes speak yes do all of that stuff but this is the nuts and bolts of it. You can write a book, but if you're an asshole, it will do very little. Okay. If you treat people like dirt, it won't help your brand. All that stuff is really what I'm trying to say. Be very proactive, protect your personal brand. Okay. Who you do business with, do promotions with, work with, all have an impact on your brand, just as the networks that you're a part of. Do you remember I spoke um, at the club, uh, at the retreat about the Miserable Bastards Club? And that's where we all know those kind of people, right? You're feeling great. You run into them and within probably about three minutes, you want to kill yourself. Okay. So um, they, they tell you about how everything's terrible and the whole world's falling apart. It's not going to be horrible right now. That's a pretty common conversation. And you thought, God, I felt great until I ran into this person, but they're permanently melancholy. It's not just a bad day. These people are always like that, you know, and that's the miserable bastards club. Excuse my, language um, and of course you know miserable people want to talk to more miserable people because we want to keep fueling the high level of miserableness and uh, and the key there is is to be avoiding those kind of groups because you do become like it you know how quickly we get into that negative miserable conversation and if you don't buy into it what tends to happen is that you are treated oh you're a bit excluded now because you know you don't buy into it Great, be excluded. It's better to be excluded. But there is a sense of joining the misery communication. I always find you get a room full of small business owners and it can quickly erode into the small business misery conversation, which I don't buy into for a second. So just being aware of that, shutting it down when it happens. Thank you, Rachel. What you're saying is so important, Andrew. This is probably more important than having the perfect logo. It is. Great. Catherine, social media posts by you and others on your posts say so much about you. Exactly. Love that. Thank you. Number four, be helpful. Okay. Now, look, I know this can sound a bit hairy fairy and, you know, a bit hippy dippy, but to me, you know, I, there's nothing better than that concept of building a reputation for being someone who's helpful, someone who solves problems, someone who supports others. You know, that kind of stuff goes a really, really long way to building your brand. And you, you see these people, these people who are always the leaders, who are the first ones to step up and be supporting the industry, to support those in need, to support the community, to support the network, to support the team, their team, to support everyone. For me, being helpful really covers a, a broad, broad, broad range. You know, typically... It's the same faces that are putting their hand up to help in times of need. You know, it's the same faces in industries that are that are trying to drive change or trying to be supportive of others. Um, it's the same faces that are there to help a community through a difficult time, um, whatever it might be. So, so my key here around this whole concept of of being helpful is to really you build your brand by being known for what it is that you actually do. And, and I, I remember, again, you know, for me in Cairns, because uh, I'd lived there for so many years, um, it was a smaller community. You know, I, I, you know, volunteered my time a lot, you know, for everyone from the RSPCA to the Salvation Army to um, raising a couple of million dollars to build a, a homeless a house for homeless kids, and all these other kinds of things. And, uh, and I did it, and it was a lot of work, and it was a lot of time. And, and there were many instances there where I thought, I, I can't do this. I'm going to need all of these charity soon i'll be homeless i'll need blood you know i'll need the salvation army i'll need some vinnies or vinnies for clothes because i'm spending all my time you know helping others but what i really started to notice was i i got a lot of major projects um hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of projects in some instances millions of dollars worth of projects from other people that were involved in the boards of these organizations or other people that just noticed and I would often have this conversation where people would say, you know what, I've been kind of watching you for the last couple of years and I noticed that every time there's a, 
um, the, a conversation comes up about a need or, or a charity or something like that, your name is mentioned in there, someone as someone who's helping. And I see that and I, I want to work with you. I, I want to give you some business. I want to, I want to give you a lot of business or, or whatever it might be. I didn't do those things to do that. I, I didn't, you know, I didn't help those charities because I, you know, did it as a business development move at all. But that was really a nice byproduct of that in a small town, which, you know, had limited opportunities in many ways. So the, the concept of being helpful, you know, really covers a lot of ground. Okay. And, and, and I also think this is a, is a part of that. It's that the need to stand for something, right? You got to stand. If you don't stand for something, you stand for nothing. Now, you go, well, but in a personal brand, if I stand for something, what about all the people that, that don't stand for that that aren't going to like me? Look, that's absolutely true, of course. But the reality is we've all got to stand for something at some stage. And even if someone doesn't agree, I have plenty of people that are fans, followers, whatever it is. And we're on very different sides of the fence, probably politically, climate-wise, every way, you know, whatever you want to know, what, whichever way you want to do it or whichever way you would look at it. but they respect me for standing for something and I respect them for standing for something. And I think that that is a part of our personal brand is to be vocal about stuff, but respecting others' opinions, you know, and, and that's, that, that's, that takes a little bit of getting used to, I think as well, you know, and of course, within reason, there's some things that I would look at that, that no, I, I don't agree with that, you know, and, and that's a bit hard for me to kind of absorb that for, to have someone who is completely, so far away from my thinking on a, on a topic, particularly around things like cruelty or, you know, whatever it might be. Climate change is a hard enough one, you know, to, uh, to deal with in the flat world, um, you know, camp that, that people seem to, uh, to be. Anyway, you've got to stand for something. Bottom line, become known as someone who helps and supports those around them in some shape or form and, you know, stand for something. Okay. Folks, is this on track? Is this helpful, ladies? Is this, is this what you're expecting for this conversation? Again, I'm not doing that as uh, being needy. I'm just, uh, just kind of touching base to make sure that we're um, on the right path there. As always, just you know, drop a little line in there. Let me know that you're still alive, chewing on your lunch, um, and that would be helpful. And then I'm just going to kind of keep going. Great. Thank you, Jen. Awesome. That'll do. That'll keep me going. Clarissa, so helpful. We have no questions as we're all thinking and listening. That's fine. I'm happy with that. Clarissa, thank you. Allison, it's very helpful. Great. Thank you so much, folks. I, I'm really not needy, um, but I just like to make sure that I'm hitting the spot. Um, Claire, very helpful. Great. Thank you, Linda. Great. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay. Next one is the concept of growing wisely. Okay. What does that really translate to? I guess that that we go through different stages and our personal brand develops over time. Um, and, and it's interesting, Joplin, uh, who most of you I would imagine know, Joplin Higgins, you know, we knew each other from a life many, many years ago in Cairns when we were different people, a thousand years ago, Joplin. And, uh, and of course, you're a very, very different person and, and where you're at now, as am I. And, uh, and of course, that's what it's all about. You know, brands have to evolve. You know, Qantas, you know, hasn't got the same brand as it did 20 or 30 years ago. Same with personal brands. They need to evolve over time. What we stand for, what we believe in, you know, what uh, even the look and feel. Uh, I mean, all of that kind of stuff has to change. I'm 54 now and I'm moving into that, um, that zone I know as a speaker and as an entrepreneur and as an educator. Um, that, that, you know, for me, I, I'm moving into the wise stage, I guess is what I would call it. I, hopefully, it's a wise stage. And a lot of the time with the work that I'm doing, I'm really getting asked a lot to, to predict a bit about what I see as the future, but also to reflect on what I've seen in the last 35 years. And this is normal, a bit of gray hair, you get a little bit older, you move into that space. So I need to make sure that my brand is appropriate for that. You know, 20 years ago when I was first writing books and, you know, I'm the entrepreneur, I'm, I'm talking about small business, do that. It was a bit edgier. It was more uh, lots of advice and lots of this kind of stuff. And I'm talking about marketing and I'm talking about customer service and I'm talking about all that kind of stuff. So it was a different time. And what I was sharing was a lot different as well. So all I'm really saying here is that your 
brand needs to develop over time. It needs to mature over time. It needs to evolve. And that is everything from, yes, the look and feel of a logo, if you've got a personal logo for your brand, right through to even what you wear. You know, that, that needs to evolve over time. Your messaging needs to evolve over time. So for a lot of people, you know, it, it might be time to, to stop and kind of really look at your personal branding, the message that you're sending, the whatever comprises a personal brand for you and say, does it need to have that bit of a refresh? And I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. But it needs to be considered. We've got to be kind of constantly growing, adding value and adding depth to our brand. So I've obviously done a lot more things over the years. You know, how do I bring them in without just doing a one hour brag sheet every time I talk to someone? You know, like that's, that's just kind of irritating for all involved. Okay. Um, even if you're starting out now, and you're saying, well, I'm right here right now. I've never really looked at this personal branding thing. Like, where do I start? What do I do? Well, you kind of go back to the beginning here. You go, well, I need to look at my brand. Like, what do I want to be known for? What words do I want people to use? There's a couple of funny little um, tests um, that people kind of talk a bit about. Like, if you're a car, is one that I've, I've seen a few times. What, what, what car would best describe you as a personal brand? Are you a V-Dub Beetle? You know, or a mini, little, sexy, run around fast and sharp, or you're a bit more of a long old Merc. You know, that's kind of all style. You just kind of cruise. You're going to do your 60Ks now. And if you live in Melbourne, where I live in South Melbourne, uh, sorry, in, in South Yarra, you don't use indicators. When you own that big old Merc, you just drive wherever you like and, uh, and enjoy that. So what kind of car would you use to describe yourself? You know, uh, like start to think a bit about what, what does your brand look like as a human being, you know, when you add a car element to it. So you've got to start somewhere. And that's a great way uh, to start that. Oh, you did that in the mastermind class like last year. Good on you, Clarissa. What kind of car were you, Clarissa? That's, that's an interesting kind of a question. Um, remember, you know, the, the key is that someone is, oh, yeah, you're a mini, of course. I was going to say a V-dub. Um, remember, if someone's deciding to work with you, they're always doing an internal risk analysis. You know, will I work with this person or not? Is there enough information, enough credibility touch points that take away the risk for me? That's what it always boils down to. A personal referral gives us great credibility, right? You know, our website, our personal reputation, all that kind of stuff is what, you know, reduces our risk. So as we get older, we get more of those kind of, you know, nice little credibility touch points that we can do stuff with. But when we're growing, we've got to invest time. We've got to invest money, some resources into developing a personal brand that maybe is, you know, having your own website, which is like your andrewgriffiths.com.au, your clarissaraywood.com.au, a logo, a look and feel for your brand, even when you've got your own business, you know, so you might have XYZ lawyers, but you would still want to have your own kind of personal brand website. You promote each other that way. But it's just, it's, I recommend that to everyone. And the reason being is your personal branding website then kind of has a bit of a life of its own. And you can actually leverage that a lot more to promote your law firm um, as opposed to when you're inside your law firm and you're trying to promote other stuff. So you get two bites of the cherry. That's another conversation, but a really kind of good one as well. So grow wisely, get other people's input. So wherever you are, whether you need a brand refresh or whether you start, this is a space where you need to invest a bit of cash in my view. The other stuff is all thinking, acting. How do I do? How should I act? What should I do? And we've got to go, okay, grow wisely. So I've just had a bit of a brand adjustment. If you remember a few years ago, Qantas did that where they changed the logo and they pulled the flying uh, white rat into a bit longer, made it a bit thinner, put it on a diet on the tail of their planes. Uh, for me, um, I, I've been um, kind of Andrew Griffiths and my whole thing has been about energizing entrepreneurs globally as my tagline. Whereas now what it is, I'm an entrepreneurial futurist. Okay. So that means that my, I specialize in helping uh, individuals, organizations, businesses, and even industries to future proof themselves. And I do it through a process that I call considered evolution. And that has seven key elements to it. All right. Pretty much what I spoke about at, at, uh, at the club uh, retreat. Now, um, that's, that's my 54 year old Andrew Griffiths positioning. A little bit wiser, a little bit older, you know, just doing what I'm doing. Bang. That's what's kind of come into play there. So 
that's this stage. In 10 years' time, I'll revamp, I'll kind of do something else. So the evolution of that is what we're talking about, okay? So personal brand is a perception that people in your network have when they hear your name. The most successful brands evolve as the world around continues to change. I talk about future, being future-proof because with a decade ender or a decade beginner, it's often a big part of the conversation. 2020 now, now we're starting to look to 2050. That was a million years ago. Now it's actually not that far away. And, uh, and that is a big number for most of us. Okay, next one, number six, is this concept of pausing often. Okay, what does that translate to? So a couple of things in there. Sorry, I'll just try and turn that phone off. It's a bit irritating for me. Um, this one here, this pause and reflect. You know, pause and reflect. I do this on a regular basis. I try and do it three or four times a year. I rent a little beach house here in the Bay of Fires. This is a view from the veranda. Uh, I go there to three, four times a year where I can. Um, and we go there and literally just do that pause and reflect on business, what's going on, um, life, the universe, all that kind of stuff. And that's where I stop and reflect a bit about what's happening with my, my branding, my business positioning, that what's going on in my world, the community, all those kind of things. These time out sessions for me are so important. Um, and because I do them on a regular basis, I make these little changes and amendments as I'm going. Do I need to be ramping up my social media? Is my messaging on target? Is my branding? Am I, am I sharing enough? Am I um, giving enough? Am I you know, posting enough photos, you know, what skill sets do I need to be developing? What do I need to be, you know, doing more of? Um, you know, all of those kind of things um, that, that come into play there. But we've got to pause. And it's much easier to say, okay, well, we want to grow wisely over time, but pause and reflect, pause and reflect. Now, I'd like to say that I do that for my business a lot. And my whole world is all about pause and reflect from doing a yearly plan to a quarterly plan to a monthly plan to a weekly plan, to a daily plan, to an hourly plan. And even something as little as I do a, a one hour check-in on the hour, every hour, just literally I spend 30 seconds to look at my to-do list and say, am I on track? If I'm not on track, what do I have to do to pull it back? If I don't do that, what happens is at the end of the day, many of you will be able to relate to this, is I go, I did none of the things on my to-do list today, but I was busy as buggery all day, yet what the hell have I been doing? This hourly check-in just keeps me on track. And that's how I get an enormous amount of stuff done because I'm always focused. I'm always pulled back in the track. The same thing happens with, you got to pause. The only way that I found to stay on track is this regular pause, take a step back and just kind of, you know, reflect, change, you know, set the course right again, do all of those kind of things. If you do it, it's like, it's like those businesses that turn around at the end of the year and go, oh my God, I, I made a profit. The, ta I, the accountants just said, I've made a profit this year. And I go, seriously? You don't know every month whether or not you've made a profit? I know every day whether or not I've made a profit for today, you know, let alone every, every week, every month, every year. And I know exactly how much profit or loss I've made every month for the last 15 years. How? By pausing, by pausing, by pausing, by pausing. When we're kind of always moving forward, sometimes we've got to slow things down. And I'm a big advocate of the slow business movement. And that is slowing things down to get them right. Slow things down to do things better. Slow things down to do less, you know, so that we enjoy it more along the way. It is definitely not about making less money or having less impact. But in a world that's all about scaling, hustle, I just disagree with most of that. To be brutally honest, I'm the, the other side of the coin. But this is me descending into a rant. And I'd just like to say for the record, why is it that the wind blower or a leaf blower always starts in the middle of a webinar? Something, something weird that happens about that. Thank you, Claire, as well. I, I love your little comment here. I think that I'm a beaten up old Tirana. You poor darling. I'm sure you're not. And yes, this webinar is being recorded. The bottom line, pause periodically, take a snapshot of where you are and where you're heading, make adjustments. It's easier to make small ongoing adjustments as opposed to massive changes. Um, that's some of the biggest and best advice I can offer you. Okay, and of course, the last one is we've got to build trust. And I can't believe that I'm actually on time. I'm, Clarissa, I'm so excited. Um, 
Build trust. Okay, we live in a skeptical world. There is absolutely no doubt about that. Trust is a big commodity, right? We get that into commodity in short supply. You know that better than anyone. It is amazing how many people, you know, self-sabotage themselves, even in the simplest of ways. They're just late all the time. People who can't turn up on time. Now, if you're one of these people, look, I'm not trying to bag anyone or whatever, but, you know, I am never late for anything. And I don't understand people who are late all the time. You know, I, I, there was a, when I was in Cairns, um, I know I keep saying, when I was in Cairns, when I was a boy, there was a lady who ran a PR company. She was the best marketing ever because she couldn't, she would turn up regularly 15 to 20 minutes late for every client meeting. And I, I would get the phone calls from the people who would just go, I'm sick and tired of sitting around waiting for, a, <clears throat> you can have my work simply because you turn up on time. Not for any other reason. Thank you, Joplin. Yes, you do know who I'm referring to, right? Um, you know, people that just don't deliver on their promises. I'm a really, really, really busy guy, you know, like, in, like all of you. But I tell you, if I make a promise, I make a commitment, I deliver it. I build my reputation on delivering. You know, that's, that's, you know, that's what a great, you know, brand is. It's a trusted brand, okay? It's a trusted brand. Um, there's a great story. I can't remember if I mentioned this at the, the retreat or not, uh, but a few years ago in Adelaide, um, there's a brand called Spring, Spring Gully, I think it is, or Spring Valley, and they make um, like sauce and chutneys and things like that. And one day they sent out this media release on a Friday saying, we're sorry, but after 60 years, we're closing down. We just can't afford to keep going. Um, you know, Coles and Woolies don't buy our products and, you know, we, we're worried. We're a family business and we're concerned that if we don't close now and we keep trading, we're not going to have enough money to pay our staff, their super and all that stuff. So we're going to close in two weeks. These, this business made products that everyone in South Australia has on their breakfast table, in their cupboards. Even though not everyone would probably know the company name, everyone had this really strong emotional connection to their products, to these condiments, to their pickles, to their sauce, whatever it might be. And, and they were a trusted company because they were reliable and people knew it was local and all the rest of it. They'd built this great brand, but it was all about trust. Next thing, people are protesting in the streets about, you know, save Spring Gully, save Spring Gully, the radio, the TV. The, there's this entire campaign that started and got global attention to save this condiment making business that employed like 20 people and it was a little business that, could disappear and who would even notice, right? But they were so loved, admired and respected for making condiments. So what happens? All of this awareness goes on. All of a sudden they get a phone call from Coles saying we want to buy a couple of million dollars worth of your products. So when Coles rings up and puts that order in, Woolies rings up and puts in a double the size kind of an order. And of course, Spring Gully then is saved by that a really great little lesson in there. And I asked this question, would your clients fight for your business? Hmm. The way that clients will rarely fight for a business, they'll fight for a person. And uh, when your personal brand is really strong and has incredible integrity, that's when people will fight for you. You go, well, why would anyone need to fight for me? Well, you never know. You know, you never know. I, I certainly have had experiences where I've been in some really tough times and I was so humbled by the response to clients. I had a big client go broke. I lost a lot, a lot of money and I really didn't know if I was going to survive it, to be brutally honest. And I had people ringing me saying, Andrew, I can only imagine what's going on. I've got a project. It's 50 grand. I'll pay you up front, help with cash flow while you're dealing with this. You know, I had you know, I had tears come down my face for the support that I had from people um, when I went through a really tough time. And, um, and you know, that's what building a, being a bloody good person, I would hope, does. You know, building that really strong brand does. You know, you've got to get comfortable telling your story. You know, you've got to share. You've got to let people in. These days, people want to know who, who the person behind the business in. And that's not necessarily easy for us to do. As Australians, you know, we're kind of brought up with don't, talk about yourself too much. That's got to change. You've got to let people in, get comfortable telling your story. It's not all about telling a fairy tale. It's about the good, the bad, and the ugly. It's about telling the whole story. 
okay? And of course, the last part of about this is to build trust is to be consistent. You know, you've got to be consistent. And I've got a little trust framework that I kind of put in here. And I talk about controlling your ego, being respectful, being considered with your actions, being curious about other people. Do the little things that other people won't do. That's a great way to build trust and to build your brand. Always stand tall. Never do something that's going to make you feel like you've got to not stand tall when you walk down the street. Um, collaborate fearlessly. If you're going to partner with someone and you've done all your homework, play full on or don't play at all. And this concept of playing a long game, you build trust over a long period of time. You lose it in a heartbeat. This is a new thing I've started doing. I'm not really sure where this has come from, but I've started doing that a lot. Okay. In a world where trust is a precious commodity, we all need to ensure we're building trust through our personal branding activity. So seven steps to building a personal brand. Number one, brand you. Build your brand, treat yourself as a brand, understand what that means. Number two, be incredibly considered with every action that you take. Number three, partner well, partner slowly. Be slow to partner, do your homework, right? Number four, be helpful, but develop a reputation for just being extraordinary, helpful and supportive. Uh, number five, grow wisely. You know, know that you're going through different stages. Know that you, your brand needs to mature. You know, grow as a human being and you'll build a better personal brand. Number six, pause often, okay? Make adjustments all the time. Take a step back. Reflect on everything in your life, not just your business, but pausing is an is a undervalued kind of uh, tool. And of course, number seven, the last one, is to build trust. Everything these days about trust, we have a, a lack of trust epidemic and a trust crisis. I just read an article this morning in the Financial Review talking about how you know the role of CEOs now is to rebuild trust. And mostly it's from the CEOs who did nothing to destroy that trust, I might add. But trust is everything because we're all so super cynical now. If you've got a personal brand that's bulletproof and strong, believe me, you're trusted and you will have a great business as a result of that, all right? So I know it all sounds kind of complicated, but you can't do nothing. You can't lay low. You can't post nothing. You can't say nothing. It doesn't work that. If you do that, people are going to form their own opinion about your brand. And that is, as I say on that slide, very, very rarely is a good thing. Okay. So my challenge to you today is very simple. There's three things I want you to do. Number one is to be absolutely considered with every single thing you do. Every, from how you drive on the road to how you pop into the milk shop and to the deli and, and buy a thing of milk on the way home to how you treat people when you're turning up for an appointment. You know, the receptionist has far more uh, significance and weight than people realize, but treat everyone in a very considered way, but be very considered with your actions. Number two, find a personal brand role model, someone who you admire and respect study all that they do and learn from that particular person, okay? Whoever they may be. And number three, please, please, please protect your personal brand at any cost. Think long-term. Never do a single thing that could possibly damage your personal brand, whatever that may be. And only you know what that line is, all right? But I'm gonna say is that once you destroy it and you just you know, build a lifetime building it, destroy it in a moment. And, uh, and there's so much evidence of that. Where do you start? Right here, right now, we know this concept. Everything we do is either building or eroding our personal brand. And that, if you're going to do everything, and if you're going to do anything, when you get this slide deck and you want to do something, print that out and put that on the wall. Everything we do is either building or eroding our personal brand. If you get it right and you build a, an incredible personal brand, it will serve you for life with extraordinary rewards. Every single day, my life is so extraordinary on so many different levels from the people I meet, the business opportunities, the places I go, the, 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 the ability to influence others in such an amazing way, whether it be running a workshop, speaking an event, uh, people reading my books, doing a webinar like this, you know, it's extraordinary. And, and, you know, sure, don't worry. I have plenty of challenges and ups and downs and all that kind of stuff as well. But I have far more of the great stuff. And most of that comes back to the fact that people trust me. 
I have a strong personal brand. People believe in me and they want to work with me. And I will do nothing to damage that because once you lose it, you've lost it forever. Righto, I'm four minutes and seven, eight, nine seconds late. I'm sorry about that. Um, that was a, a mammoth kind of one hour crash test in, in personal branding. Um, and that's basically it from me. Um, a, a ton of info. My advice from here would be, you know, maybe listen to it again at some stage if you've got a spare hour, put it in the, I don't know, play it on a device, do something like that. But those seven kind of key pillars are the things to go away. Um, and ponder. So, you know, uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, I really appreciate your kind comments at the end there as well. Um, I hope that this has been of value. I'm coming back in September uh, to talk about something else. I can't quite remember what it is. Um, but, you know, and again, it's great to be a part of this community. Uh, hopefully, I'll see you again later in the year at the next retreat, or I'm sure our paths will cross. We're talking about doing a whole pile of other things together. Um, it's a great community. Total kudos to you for being a part of it and kudos to Sarah, lovely Sarah, and, uh, and of course, to, to the, the wonderful uh, Clarissa, someone I have enormous amount of respect for and I love you dearly, Clarissa. Um, so thank you very much, folks. Have an incredible afternoon and I hope I've thrown a few or sown a few seeds to ponder in there as well. And I'll make this recording available um, today and, uh, and I'll share with Sarah about how everyone can get access to that. All right. You got any questions? You're welcome to ask me. Tag me on the uh, Facebook page if you can do that. I'm a member of 27 million groups these days. So if you tag me, it'll come up and I'll be able to help you. All right. Thanks very much, folks. And, uh, and uh, have a great afternoon. I look forward to chatting again soon. Bye for now.